fifth year. Fifth year. Rob came to us, I think it was when the iPhone was first released. Mm -hmm. The timing was perfect. You know, the iPhone was released in June. Rob was here with it ahead of time. So he's been doing podcasting on this whole iOS, iPhone, iPad topic since the beginning. And is it every week that you're still doing it? Every week. Um, and if I miss a week, my listeners let me know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to welcome Rob back. Well, we've been happy. I know you're a KFF local, or a Kansas City local. So yeah, so it's, it's nice. I'm only 20 you. miles away, so it's, it's, uh, it's nice to be here. I know some of you come from a little bit farther than 20 miles away. Okay. Matter of fact, I don't think, bit. is anybody here from Kansas City? They're not in the room at the moment, yeah. we have two. Do you? Okay. One from Southern Kansas City, one from Paola, Kansas. Paola, yep. Okay. And we have two Canadians. Right. Well, you had some, didn't you have someone from New Zealand one year? New Zealand and Australia, but I think you break it more like Australia. Yeah. Australia. Yes, okay. we've had Australia. Okay. We're going to go back to one Canadian one year. <laughs> and, oh, do you have speakers? Because I'm, well, I'm oh, a, oh, let's see. Carl, can we Carl? use your speakers? Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you want me to go get them? Oh, if they, you don't have them, hopefully you'll hear. <laughs> What room? We just ride in. It's 106. 106. We just ride inside the door. And All right. I, I don't have much in. Oh, okay. And this this video is meant more actually for visual than it was for the audio, even though it's about music. And it was one of the things I love about the iOS devices now. Is when people first got them, there, everyone was like, "Oh, the iPhone, the iPad. It's all. They're all just. They're just consumption devices." But people are taking them to be a lot more than consumption devices. And there's a bunch of different videos that are on YouTube of people creating music on their iOS devices. And I kind of took five of the, my favorite ones and I just did a mashup of them, where I'm just showing what people are doing. This guy here had a Kickstarter project where he uses a Wii and the iPhone to do different instruments. Uh, this girl here, she's doing some Lady Gaga, but he can do a violin, he can do guitar, drums. Uh, this was a band who shot their whole video on iPhones and created all the music on iPhones. So it was just, it was just uh, some neat, interesting videos out there, and I'm not going to play it all the way through because it's when I did the final mashup and I was watching the whole thing, I'm like, man, that's long, and they just eat dinner, and I can't play that whole thing. Um, but it, it, they actually shot this one. I don't know if anybody saw this video. It's from Atomic Tom. If you get a chance, look it up. Atomic Tom on, on YouTube. They shot the video on the subway in New York with iPhones, three different iPhones, guys around with the iPhones, and all the instruments were were uh, iPhones. She's got three different iPhones that she's playing music on and then sings into another one. So she's doing four. I'm going to shoot a video that's going to get five million hits on YouTube. My might move the cat. <laughs> and then these people did it with, um, with iPads and different musical instruments. And, and, oh, I see. Yes. This is the Christmas one, right? Right, yep. Yeah. So this one is another one with multiple million hits, and then they, these people have all different instruments, cellos, flutes, they're, they're labeled what instrument they are, because when you have the iPad, they're all iPads. But anyway, it's just one is... But, it, yeah, you know, yeah, it's more than just a toy, but it is a toy. Uh, as mentioned, I do a podcast on the iPhone. Originally, it was called Today an iPhone. Um, and if you don't have an iPhone, Oops. I'd ask you what's wrong with you, but, this but I already know you're poor, <laughs> <laughs> or a person who doesn't care about technology, which means you're either poor or a loser. We didn't even make this commercial to sell you an iPhone. We made it to mock you for being one of the have-nots. <laughs> we are the sneeches with stars upon stars, and you are one of the regular sneeches. If you don't have an iPhone, honestly, good. In your face. If you don't have an iPhone, frankly... <laughs> I had to edit out what he said at the end there. <laughs> I tried to keep this presentation G-rated, and I tell you what, trying to find videos that are funny on YouTube that are G-rated 
<laughs> it's tough. Hard. It's tough. Yeah, you have to edit. You can, you can almost stop at trying to find videos that are funny sometimes. Yeah. You don't have to worry about G rated. Some yeah. of it is stupid. Yeah. But that, there's a lot of spoofing going on about Apple and that. But to, back to who I am. I've done the Today in iPhone podcast, which was originally April of 2007 before the iPhone came out. Uh, for those that are new here, um, I, then it went to become Today in iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch, which was really wordy. And then Apple called it iOS. And I said, oh, great, I can just change the name of the thing to Today in iOS. And that's what the show is now. And it covers the iPhone, the iPad, the iPod Touch, and that little hobby, the Apple TV. <laughs> because it actually does run iOS. And eventually, it'll have apps. I'm hope, praying, because I want to get Hulu app on there. Um, <laughs> the other nice thing about doing this presentation when we do it, it's always right after the Apple quarterly conference call. So I can give you guys an update on the Apple numbers. Because they're really kind of cool when you look at how many iOS uh, iPhones. This is just the iPhones sales by quarter that they've sold. So when I came here the first time, there was just like 270,000 had been sold. That was it. Um, and then it keeps growing and growing and growing. And then the last quarter, Apple sold 20.34 million iPhones. That's without a new iPhone. Well, unless you count the white one. Um, <laughs> Then, if you want to look at an aggregate, how many iPhones have been sold to date? This is just the iPhones. We're now up to 129.1 million iPhones are out in the world. Granted, some people have more than one. <laughs> I think I get the original, the 3GS, and, and uh, the 4. And I'll show you at the end, the very last video I show you, what you can do with your old iPhones. Um, whoops. There we go. And uh, the iPad actually did really well last quarter. Uh, in the conference quarter, they said they sold every iPad they could make, and they were able to make 9.25 million iPads. Uh, so it, they're selling like hotcakes. And again, I believe it has a lot to do with more than just for email and web surfing. People are doing a lot more with their iPads. Oh, it's, it's, it sucks. It's a piece of junk. Oh, yeah. How come they're selling nine point whatever million? Nine point two five. Well, well, you know, suck really bad. Well, you know, <laughs> nobody else is selling tablets, and I always yeah. try to put that in perspective. No one else is selling tablets. It's just when people talk tablet sales, they're talking the iPad, and part of the reason of that is here's a commercial. Here's a commercial from Verizon on them trying to sell a tablet. Android three point is designed for serious multitasking. Oh. Did she read my mind? Anyway, how can I convince my wife? Your wife will love the dual core Tegra T chipset to stream movies from Android Market. It's also 4G LTE upgradable. How many wow. people's wives are wow. going to love the processor in their smartphone or their, <laughs> their tablet or their computer? How many husbands are going to love the processor in their <laughs> tablet? What? <laughs> uh, I, I, you've seen the Apple commercials for the tablets? Mm -hmm. They're emotional. They connect on a different level, and that's where I think you know people like Verizon don't get it, and their Apple's competitors don't get it, and the products miss, and they try to sell on specs, and you can't sell on specs. You have to sell on experience, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more on the iPad uh, and showing some experiences here and coming up. Uh, total sales to date on the iPad: twenty-eight point seven four million. Uh, Again, I'll mention a little bit more on, on global numbers, but I, I guess the way to put that in perspective, 2009, 1.3 million tablets were sold in the world. In the world. That's it. And so in 15 months, 28.74 million. And you always hear Android's kicking iPhone's butt. Well, if you compare iOS devices to Android, there's 222 million iOS devices out there, and there's 144 million Androids. And that number is probably a little high. I skewed it up this last quarter because they don't actually give you the real number. You have to wait for Gartner and other people to come in. So, um, still, iOS is still kicking everyone's butt. And if you're a developer, and how many people here develop programs? Are you developing for smartphones? Anyone? Which app? Which which uh, uh, platform do you develop for first? iOS. Because that's where the money is. iOS five. I can't sell it. With, with that said, I do <laughs> see more and more Androids every day. Yeah, but people, the developers aren't making any money. Probably. Yeah, I mean, when you actually look at what, because uh, we, I work for a company, we have um, 
about 1,600 apps out in the world, 700 on the iOS side, the rest are on the Android side, and we're in Android Marketplace, we're in the Amazon, and we were one of the launch partners in CS for the CS. Uh, so we, we have a lot of apps, the company I work for, so my day job happens to be with apps too. And uh, 10 to 1 ratio, money you make from one platform to the other, it's, it's, it's Why pretty scary. Why is there's not a 10 to 1 ratio of devices? People on Google expect free and people on Google don't trust the marketplace. They don't trust, you know, to spend. So one, there's an expectation of free. Two, there's a there's a distrust of of, set, of putting your credit card in on these marketplaces. On iTunes, it's so easy and people trust it. That's the whole thing that Android was basically snipping the nose face on. They go, ours is open, ours is free, ours is whatever. But it's become a wild, wild west. Yeah. Vagabond open digital. means malware. I mean, yeah. so the malware hits are happening. And, and you know, I don't want to I don't want to kick Android when they're down, but you know they have a lot of issues on the patent side. So Android may be peaking um, when you look at it because they just lost a, a major one with HTC um, battle with Apple um, over patents. Which is you ever get an email on your smartphone and you see a little link and you click it and you can call the phone number, or you see someone's address and you click it and you can open a map up. Apple had that patented in 1996. Six, yes. Wow. That's, and that's half the reason I think the patent system is busted anyway. But that's a whole different story. Well, and then Apple it is what it is, right? And Apple teamed up with Microsoft and RIM, and they bought all the Nortel patents for four point five yeah. billion dollars, <laughs> and they bought them for one reason, and, and that's to go over and take that club and beat Android over the head with it. <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 Google screwed up, big time, big yeah. time screw up. Um, on that patent portfolio, because originally it was like valued at like two hundred million dollars, the patent portfolio, and Google came in and said, "We're going to pay nine hundred billion. We're going to start. We're nine hundred million. We're going to start bidding at nine hundred million." And then everybody else went, "Wow, they must really want this. If they want it, we better have it." <laughs> if Google had been under the radar and slipped in and and done it wisely they probably could have gotten the patents but because they raised this red flag uh, it got apple to get together with microsoft and rim and said no nah, we're not going to let google have any patents anyway, so the last 12 months what's happened uh, <laughs> the white iphone 4 was delayed and then there was this little antenna gate thing we were talking about last time i was here uh, finally, a Verizon iPhone 4 was launched uh, at, you know, around February. Uh, iPhone 4, again, was delayed and delayed. And finally, it was released. Uh, along the lines, we had an iPad 2. And there was Location Gate. How many people remember Location Gate? <laughs> it, was so, it was so overblown. It did not store people's actual location. It stored cell, uh, it, it stored Wi-Fi spots and cell spots in their general location, but it didn't actually store their couldn't tell. When you actually looked at the data, you came down to a grid, and it wasn't even at your house. So it would be like all these different places, and it was a grid location. It was, it was really such overblown BS. And these government hearings, that wasn't that about stuff that the government said that the cell, cell phone uh, providers had to collect that information anyway so they could find a person? What you, had, you yeah. actually had in the government hearings, you had one group step up and say, that this is wrong, they shouldn't be collecting this, and you had another group step up from the government and say, Apple has to collect this. So you had the U.S. government in there, two arms of the U.S. government, uh, the FTC saying no, and I think it was uh, the FCC or one of the other groups were, was saying, yes, you have to have this. So you know, even the government couldn't even decide what was right. And Apple said, hey, look, we, we made a mistake. Uh, that didn't stop them from losing a lawsuit in Korea. They had to pay $1,000 to some lawyer. Right. I was like, why? Because his, some data was, I, I don't get that. Anyway, um, there was no iPhone 5 launched, and which makes this presentation tough. So what I'm going to have to do is talk about what some of the rumors are that were there. And I was kind of going through, and I said, you know, make a chart. And I'll show a chart and all the different rumors. And boy, that was boring when I started putting that together. I said, let's do it visually. Let's They're go through and map. show what some people are showing as rumors. And so this is one with an iPhone 5 mini um, and the iPhone 5, and here's what the iPhone 4. That was one option, and, and I'll leave that one. Um, the metal back was another good rumor. 
Um, this one here, kind of reminiscent of one of those uh, iPod minis or yeah. nanos. Uh, it's kind of lookish. Definitely not. Um, people are liking this metal back idea because glass on both sides is kind of like buttering toast on both <laughs> sides when you drop it. Yeah. <laughs> not a good thing. Uh, Joshua Topolsky, if this is my next, I love this one. This is, has zero chance of being the iPhone 5, but it got a lot of hits to his website. Uh, doesn't Why matter if you're accurate, it only matters if you drive traffic. Why is it so unlikely to be real? It has this thins out, and it's just, okay, if you're going to take it and you're going to side to side, you're going to increase the screen size, and you're going to make it much thinner than it currently is, then you have no battery. It's like, it's like an iPhone Air. Charge. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was basically what they, they, they inspired us off the iPhone Air. And it just, um, this is, uh, when we come back next year, I guarantee you that this will not be what the iPhone 5 looks like. Uh, this is probably one of the uglier ones I've seen. <laughs> I was like, oh. I hope that's not it. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, this is as bad as that. Remember the pudgy iPad? Yeah. yeah, this is like someone saw that and, ooh, let's make an iPhone look like that. Uh, this one here is an iPhone 5. Don't fear, it's perfect. The no home button theory. Um, look at the camera off here to the side. I like this one, though. The, the wafer thin. Yeah. So you basically got a screen and no components. <laughs> um, but, but you know what? If you're going to go that far, might as well go this far. <laughs> there you go. And, you know, this is as likely as any of the other ones. Um, this one here, if you're still someone holding out for the keyboard. Oh, I am. Um, going to happen. I am. This one it deserves extra burning. <laughs> this one burn a little bit longer. Um, this one I like. This Of all of them, this was one of my favorite ones for, not for this picture, but for this picture. Does it? The apple's a flesh. Ah. Ooh. And I was like, oh, that's ingenious. Photoshop, I love it, but not going to happen. <laughs> but he was like, okay, I, I got to give the guy credit for ingenuity and creativity on that one. Um, so, you know, you have the roundup of what's going to be in the iPhone 5, and people are talking about the bigger screen. There's the, the rumor is going to go all the way to the edge, no, no edge. Um, it's going to be without a home button. Uh, the better camera. The better camera, I do believe. I do believe that better camera one. This one here, better resolution. How do you get better resolution than retina display? Why would you have better resolution than retina display? We're going to turn it up to 11. Okay. Um, so it comes down to two basic camps now. People that believe it's going to be the same design and that there's going to be a drastic new design with the metal back. I fall into the same design category. Um, I, I don't see it going to the four inch screen. Um, I think it's going to be the same screen, the same. I think when you look at the iPhone 5, it's going to look pretty much just like the iPhone 4. I think this is the iPhone 5. Um, it might be a little bit thinner, it might be a little bit lighter, um, but it's basically going to look like this, I think. It's going to have the higher resolution camera. Um, but the camera on here right now is pretty darn good. Uh, it'll have a faster processor. And maybe have a little bit more RAM, but I, I just, it's a pretty nice design right now. I just don't see them going away from it to something radical. Um, it, especially when they sold 20.34 million last quarter. It's not like people are going, oh, we don't like this anymore, change. <laughs> it's the number one selling, it's the number one selling smartphone on Verizon and AT&T last month, in the last few months. And it's 15, or it's, what's it, 13, 14, 12, 13 months old. 13 months old, and it's still the number one selling smartphone, beating all the Evos and all the other stuff. What I can tell you about is iOS 5. iOS 5, they've talked and released. I actually have iOS 5 on the iPad here, and I've got it on this guy, on the 3GS. Um, and, and some of the nice new features, iCloud, as we've all heard about, Notification Center. Uh, if you have a jailbroken iPhone, you may already know about that. They basically stole basic design there. Uh, newsstand, kind of boring. Um, uh, Twitter integration, okay, but you know, I, we'll see how, how, how many people are doing Google Plus? I asked earlier. Okay. Yeah. 
So you, it's very much the early adopter group. But I, I'm liking Google Plus more than I, I'm posting more on Google Plus than I did on Twitter because it doesn't limit me to 140 characters. And as you might guess, I'm not the kind of person that's limited to 140 characters. <laughs> often. Um, the reminders are nice in iOS 5. Uh, my favorite thing is the camera button. Is act, this is actually uh, on iOS 5 when you do this, it takes a picture. Yeah. So it's like, wow. Why couldn't they have done that earlier? Um, which is actually really nice because it's really fast to do that. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens if my three-year-old gets a hold of it. Um, uh, there was an app that did that, Camera Plus. Or right, something. Camera Plus and Apple banned it, kicked it out because yeah. of that. So actually, I have it on here. Um, they repurposed a button and that wasn't allowed. Right, so I think this one is, is jailbroken, so. Oh, got mute on. Yeah, no, you can't hear it, but it is actually. There we go. Should have flashed. Okay. But uh, the multiple mailboxes is the one feature my wife liked the most. So I asked her on the iPad, because she uses the iPad, uh, she likes having all multiple mailboxes, which she didn't have before. So now she can take all her church emails one place and have her friends' emails into other mailboxes. Uh, PC3 which means you no longer need a PC with the iPad. So you don't have to be the spoken hub anymore. Um, you can get it, bring it home, set it up without a PC or a Mac. Um, and if you do have a PC, you can do Wi-Fi sync. Um, the split keyboard, has anyone seen that? It's kind of cool. It's really tough to get set it up, but... Uh, Where, where the, the split keyboard comes in nice is if you're, if you're someone that likes to type with your thumbs and you want to hold on, it's tough to type like this, but if you oops, hold down here and split, the keyboard comes up like this and now you can type. Getting it to move where you want, not as easy as you would expect. And you can actually make it a little bit bigger. <coughs> Oops, or it can bring it right back. But it, that is one nice little neat feature I liked on, on the iOS 5. That default. iOS 4 supported multiple mailboxes, you just couldn't create them. Uh, if yeah, if you well, if you had an IMAP iMap account, but not right. a POP account. Oh, right. So with pop count, you get that. Um, so those are some of the new things with iOS 5. It seems to be pretty stable, but it's Apple said in their conference call that it will not be here till the fall. They reiterated that. So it won't be here until the end of September. So don't expect it anytime soon. And if you are a jailbreaker, and I'll talk about jailbreaking again, you do not want to upgrade. So that's why right now I don't have my iPhone because I, I have this jailbreak, thing, which you need if you travel at all for PDA net. I was talking about things where people can create uh, on this. This artwork are all is artwork that people send in to me on my show that are listeners of my show uh, that created these on their iPhones. Uh, this guy here is a comic, uh, an, a graphic artist for Marvel Comics that created that for me. So I was like, it's so cool. Because uh, I'm actually a Marvel guy. Uh, which kills me when my son gets into Batman. Uh, and this is obviously, uh, it, you can pretty much figure that is uh, Mark Twain. Uh, and this another guy, his name is Izzy Azard, and he has a website, and it's all artwork he creates on the iOS. And there's a couple of things he's created for me. And again, both of these pieces of artwork uh, were created on an iPhone and, or iPad. And it's amazing what this, some of these people can do as far as artwork goes. You know, I mentioned earlier that one of the things that people are talking about is the upgrade on the camera. The iPhone 4 camera is not bad, um, especially even the digital zoom. This is, I showed this slide last year, so for those that have seen this, I'm sorry if those are new. Uh, right here, I'm going to zoom in. This is with the iPhone without moving. I just did the zoom, and then I was able to take that picture. And then pinching and zooming, I was able to do this. 
So without moving, if I do that, show you side by side, I was able to go from this to this to this. It's a pretty darn good camera. I mean, anyone want to guess what kind of dog that is? A pug. I guess what pug owners would do. Back that. here, it looks like a woman in a wedding dress. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Well, this is actually a pug in front of a fence. And this is an old house I used to have, uh, which actually was a church. Um, but that's another story. So I, I was talking before about you know the issue of the iPad versus other smartphones, other tablets. So I went to Costco this weekend, and I had my three-year-old with me. And we pulled up in front of the Asus Honeycomb 3 tablet. And I said, Porter, go play a game on the tablet. What's wrong? You don't like it? What do you think of it? You don't like it. <laughs> and, and what's funny was, we're going through Costco after that, because this is when we walked in, and he kept going, I want my iPad. I don't want a new tablet. <laughs> I want my <laughs> iPad. <laughs> so I got home, and you know, this was his reaction when he realized he can keep the iPad. <laughs> There's a commercial for Apple right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Children are expensive. My wife, you know, see that's joy right there. See the smile? That's joy. That's what happens when you have an iPad. I have an iPad. Yeah. What I said, uh, another thing about the iPad too is it covers every age group. I mean, whether you're three years old or my his grandparents are in their 70s, uh, they have iPads. Uh, everyone uses it. Uh, the Pope has an iPad. The Queen of England has an iPad. The President of the United States has an iPad. My three-year-old has an iPad. Two of the four are fighting with bladder control. The other, the others are fighting for the control of the free world. You figure out who is who. Um, <laughs> So it, it's, it's something that transcends. Now, since we did have a new iPad, I can talk about what was new from the old iPad versus the new. Uh, you went from a one core A4 to a dual core A5. Again, your wife's going to love that. <laughs> uh, 256 meg of RAM to 512 meg of RAM. Uh, same high end on the storage. Uh, no camera to a front and rear camera, which I don't put the specs here because they're not worth giving. Uh, they're not very good cameras. They're sub one megapixel cameras. Uh, Are the back is sub one megapixel? Yes. Yeah. yeah, the back is a sub one megapixel, and the front's worse. Uh, How much worse could that be? <laughs> not much. Yeah. You know, the iPhone four is actually the number one camera now on Flickr. Mm -hmm. The iPad two is not going to get there. <laughs> not even close. Uh, to be fair, the cameras are adequate for what they're meant to be used for. Yeah, I, if you're doing video chatting, the front camera, I honestly don't even think there's a usefulness for a back camera on the iPad. I, I mean, yeah. let's face facts. Hold still, let me take your picture. It's, it's bulky. If this is what this is what you're used to. This is in your pocket. This is where you are. Well, job said that with the iPad 1. Right. People demand it, so they put it in. Yeah, and, and the rumor, <laughs> and, 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 and honestly, Amazon's releasing their new tablet, and the rumor is it won't have a camera. So well, you know, a tablet and camera don't have to be there. Uh, it's you don't buy the iPad because it has a camera. Um, it's just an extra feature. Uh, new on the iPad 2 is now there's a CDMA version that runs on Verizon. Uh, they added a gyroscope more again along the lines of gaming and then the HDMI output dongle so that you can run it right out and straight and do a split screen. Uh, so it does a nice split screen for displays and, and presentations. But overall, it's a little thinner, a little lighter. Uh, battery life's about the same. Battery life on the original iPad is phenomenal. If anyone has one, you know. I mean, I think if, if, I, char if I plug it in and charge it up, once or twice a week, and it's used every day. That's you know, that's about it. Uh, it's rare that I ever see the thing get to twenty percent. I mean, 
The iPhone will get to 20%. The, the iPad, not so much. Um, nice thing on the iPad is accessories. As you see the iCade here, uh, my favorite accessory. Um, the iPad 2, everyone I talk to that has one loves the, the cover, the smart cover. Um, that just flips, it opens up, and it, it goes to sleep and put it together. Um, and people have been doing some interesting things with the magnets because they have magnets in the back. Yeah, um, I don't the magnets with the magnets that go in the back. That'd be nice. The what? Yeah, because it falls off the back. It doesn't stick when it flips over. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, see, we have someone here with one. Yeah. And if he kind of stays there, it flops down. That's why he's not dancing. Yeah, see, yeah. That's the issue. Yeah, but if you can't hold it up by this way or this way, anyway, it's not going to miss you when you're holding it. I just need to pull the hat, hold my hand. Any musicians here? And you are. Garage Band is awesome. Garage Band is cool. It's so awesome. I can't be a small off any kind ever. It is. A garage Band is really cool. Um, got a note editor in there. There is a neat accessory from um, Elisis, which is a dock. You just plug the iPad into, and then you get a bunch of different connections. Here, I'll show you. I edited down their video. So, we made a solution, there. and we call it the IO dock. The IO dock is the first pro audio dock for iPad. Oh, it has wow. input and output for all your audio gear. It works with virtually every app in the App Store. If it wow. plays and records audio, if it works with Core Mini, it works with the I.O. Dock. Now, you, you know, you, you don't need to get that. I'll, I'll show an, uh, a way to get around some of that. But if you are a musician, the, really the, the nicest thing about the iPad is you've got a place to record and edit with no fan. So if you're in a quiet room, you can have it there, and there's no noise. Like even my, you know, as good as the MacBook is, it still has a fan. It still gets loud. Even the MacBook Air has a fan, and it gets loud. Um, the iPad does not. So it makes for virtually, you know, it's purely quiet. It's, it's as quiet as the Cube was. I kind of like the Cube. <laughs> um, so the other big thing on the iPhone is the App Store. Obviously, uh, there's 450,000 apps. They've done 15 billion downloads. God, the numbers are just insane. Um, I think the first time they, I came here after the uh, App Store was a year old, I think they had done 1.5 billion downloads. And then last year, that number was up to 5 billion, and now they're at 15 billion. So it, it's growing. Um, again, that comes back to why people develop for iOS first. Um, some of my favorite apps from the past year, uh, Netflix. I live my Netflix app. I do not like the fact that Netflix is changing the pricing. Um, and then Google Plus just came out with an app. Now, this is an iPhone, which is interesting. The Google Plus app is iPhone only. It's not for the iPad or the iPod Touch. So the Google Plus app, which just came out yesterday or the day before, uh, is iPad only. So anyone who has Google Plus has an iPhone, you should get that app. It actually works pretty good. The only downside is uh, adding people. Uh, it's not intuitive to which people that are in your list are actually in a circle and which ones haven't been assigned. Um, but for doing a post and taking pictures and uploading pictures really works nice. Let's see. And, and then GarageBand, which is, I think, on the iPad, it's just a phenomenal uh, product. It works so good. Um, now, when you do normally have the iPad and you open up GarageBand and you want to do audio recording, it says, you know, you can record right here to the microphone. But if you go out and you get the USB dongle, and you get a powered hub, and you plug the power in like so, and plug it in here, you can then take a USB mic, like a, a, a Yeti from Blue, and plug that in here. And when you do that, you can, then you'll see this message, message pop up. It says tap to record and, and using external USB audio. So with the simple USB dongle that you get for the camera connection kit, and then a powered USB hub, you can plug in a Blue Yeti mic, and now you have, vert, again, quiet recording. So you're just in a quiet room with no air conditioning and no background noise. It's really nice for anyone that does recording. You can also use some mics to get the Blue Yeti power hub, like the Blue Snowball or something in the power hub. <laughs> I like the idea. 
uh, and obviously jailbreaking because 450,000 apps are just not enough. Uh, and actually, um, I, there's a bunch of apps I've added here from last year, and I'll go over the slide the ones from last year. But uh, this is a new one that just came out. iUser it lets you do multiple user logins on the iPad. There you go. I so that. yeah, so this works really well. It's free. Um, yeah, it's called iUser, and you can do multi-user logins, and it, it it separates everything. It really it does a good job. Um, PDA Net. Last year I came here and said, oh, if you wanted to tethering, you know, Wi-Fi tethering, use YY. Yeah. Problem with YY was the way it was incorporated. AT&T could tell you were tethering. Then you got a little nasty grant that says, you need to pay such and such money and you're going to kick you off your unlimited plan. PDA Net has an option that says, hide how my data is being used. Oh. And <laughs> so PDA Net, which you can try out for like seven or ten days for free, um, it works really well. I used it on a recent trip to New York all the whole time, and it was a phenomenal product. I was on the train driving in and out of New York to my parents' house an hour each way, and I was on the internet the whole time. It was, it was sweet. Um, and I got stuck in the airport in Chicago overnight, and it worked great there, too. So does it automatically change things like the user agent and the browser and stuff? Um, it, it, you, it changes the way the data is reported back to AT&T, so it, it, it when you're normally tethering, you're able to tell, hey, you're using a browser that's right. not on iOS, therefore you're tethered. Yeah, so it, it, there was something to do with ports. There was something to do with the ports on when you're tethering that AT&T was able to tell if you're coming in from a certain port if you were tethering, and they changed that around. So just as far as AT&T is concerned, you're not. And I know I used it for a week solid, and I was doing a lot of data, and I didn't get the, I didn't get the nasty email. I know other people use MyWay the first time they get the email right away. It, 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 it might depend where you are, what cell location you're located in. But I would say this, if you haven't picked up a program, they're both about the same price. You might as well get PDA Net. They both work well. Um, the only downside of PDA Net, if you're trying to tether your iPad to your iPhone, it doesn't work because it sets it up as a, you need to basically have a computer to connect to it. That, that is the one downside to PDA Net. Um, Notified, which is the notification center, which Apple just added in iOS 5. So here's the beauty is all these apps, a lot of these apps will let you do the things that iOS 5 is going to do if you have an iPhone 3G. So an iPhone 3G won't, they, iOS 5 won't work with the iPhone 3G. So you have an iPhone 3G and you want to do a lot of stuff that's in iOS 5 and even iOS 4, um, there's a lot, there's an app for that, jailbroken app. What about the 3GS? The 3GS will support iOS 5. Yep, now I'm running it on, I'm running it here. Actually, I find iOS 5 works better on the 3GS than iOS 4. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens when we get to the Gold Master. Um, phone it iPad. If you have a 3G iPad, you can turn it into a phone. So there's another app there. Um, this one, Expander, uh, one of the new features in iOS 5 is uh, text where you can start typing a word and it expands it out, so basically shortcuts. Uh, so there's an app already out there that allows you to do that. Uh, Auto 3G, which is one I really, is really neat app. It turns off your 3G when it's not in use, so it saves your battery life. So this is a, is a, actually a really nice one for people that are looking to extend the battery life. And then, um, these are ones I talked about last time. Backgrounder allows you to put apps in the background. So again, you can run an iOS 3.3 .3, uh, uh, on a 3G or even the original iPhone and get apps in the background now. 3G unrestrictor tricks your um, apps into thinking they're on Wi-Fi for any ones that uh, restrict that. Um, <coughs> spoof app allows you to record calls. Screen splitter uh, mirror the iPhone. That's great for presentations. Mm -hmm. Screen splitter um, and then there's a, uh, another app uh, on your Mac that goes with that. Uh, I can't remember. There's a companion app that allows you, it makes it nice for doing uh, screencasts of apps in action. Um, and then Lockdown is a great one if you have an app that you don't want someone to get a hold of or open up. So you can password protect specific apps, which is a feature Apple should have had in iOS 5. I mean, I don't understand why they don't add that in because they know people are sharing, especially on the iPad, a lot of people are sharing. So it's the two apps that I think on the iPad that that are nice on the jailbroken side are the one iUser where you can have multiple users and then lockdown where you can have 
lock specific apps. So if you have kids, they're not opening up certain apps. I mean, yeah, Apple has restrictions in, on their apps, but what about for apps that aren't part of the Apple apps that you want to lock down? So, um, as always, I say some of the better blogs, iPhone Matters, iPhone Atlas, uh, everything iPhone. Um, podcasts, if my I, podcast, Today and iPhone, or uh, Today and iPhone.com, or Today and iOS. Mac OS Ken is another good podcast every day. Uh, it gives you all kinds of Apple news. Um, uh, RedmondPie.com is a good site to learn about jailbreaking stuff. Um, and. and no. What? I clarify. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of them. these are the ones where I go. These are the ones that I tend to go to to find the news early. Um, now I was mentioning, what do you do when you have a lot of extra iPhones around? They make good accessories for Halloween costumes. That is boo and binary. Happy to be a robot? Look at your face. Walk. So yes, that's what that's what I do with extra iPhones around for Halloween. So questions, comments. You went through a lot of potential redesigns of the iPhone five, and you said how it'll probably have a faster processor higher resolution, et cetera. It sounds like those are all upgrades to existing features as opposed to new features. Is there anything new expected in Iowa in the iPhone 5? Expect, I mean, people throw, uh, I'll tell you what there won't be. There won't be an SD card slot. Um, there won't be a keyboard. Uh, there won't be a removable battery. So these are things, you know, people that have been asking for since the beginning. Those are things that you're not going to see. Um, NFC has been a popular one. That, that, that has been a rumor, the near-field communication. Um, downside near-field communication is now a pickpocket doesn't actually even have to reach into your pocket to steal your money. Right. Um, <laughs> so, you know, having the virtual wallet, that, that's one thing. But NFC is actually one I have on, list, on the list that, that I think might happen. It's, it's a long shot. I'd say less than 50% chance. Um, will it be the thing it might be? It might be 4G. And a lot of people are saying, no, it won't be a 4G, it won't be 4G, it won't be 4G. It might be. I think the other thing it probably will be is a world phone. It'll be a CDMA, GSM phone that you'll be able to, regardless of who you buy it from, switch it over to either one. So if you buy, if you're on Verizon and you travel outside the U.S., you'll not be able to take your CDMA phone and use it in Europe. Anyone who knows who's traveled to Europe with the CDMA phone knows you, you don't get signal in Europe. Um, so that'll be nice. The same with taking it to Korea, which is a heavy CDMA country. Um, it, it, so I think that will be one, one of the technologies that you'll see in the iPhone 5. But I don't really think it's going to be all that drastic. I think it's just going to be faster. I think it, um, the software, you know, they're going to add features to the software. Um, there's probably a couple things they haven't announced yet in iOS 5 that will come out that will be specific for the the iPhone 5 that are in iOS 5. If they don't add, if, if, if it's not a significant upgrade, but they do add 4G, would it make more sense to call the next model the iPhone 4G? Oh, see, that's where it gets so confusing. Because right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. here's the problem. If they don't have 4G in this, and now it's the iPhone 5, and then, it, well, this goes to the other, there was recently a study that just came out. 34% of iPhone owners, iPhone 4 owners, think they have a 4G iPhone. <laughs> but hey, don't just think it's, you know, it's not just the iPhone owners that, are, that don't know. 20-something uh, percent of BlackBerry owners thought they have 4G. And, and then BlackBerry, and I don't know of a BlackBerry 4. So, well, no, I think, what, I really think what it comes down to is people think that Wi-Fi is 4G. And I think people go, oh, well, I got Wi-Fi on my smartphone. It must be 4G. Well, I also think if people just like buy a new top of the line phone within the last three months, they assume it just must be 4G. Well, yeah, nobody has. Yeah, but almost nobody has. I mean, there's only a few 4G phones, and and the, and, and the battery life is horrible. And and you know, unless there's some good improvement from Qualcomm and, and others in the chipsets, um, it, it will be 
interesting to see what happens come September. But it will be yeah, in the conference call. Apple pretty much said there's going to be something announced in this quarter that will affect sales. And they said they won't answer any more questions, but essentially that was, everyone took that to mean that there is going to be a new iPhone announced. It'll probably be announced early in September, um, mid-September with a date, a launch date somewhere around October 4th, give or take a week. Uh, I'm guessing October 4th right now, um, but somewhere around there. And, and you know, it'll be a couple of weeks where they, there's going to be a lull in sale of iPhones, so that's why Apple warned on that. Um, some people are rumor, have the rumor that there's going to be multiple iPhones, so maybe a couple iPhones, that one will be uh, a little bit smaller. You saw the picture with the mini. Um, I just don't see the reason for the mini. If people keep saying cost, you can get a refurbished iPhone 3GS right now for $9. It's less than a movie ticket. Um, granted, you have to pay for the two-year data plan, which is almost as, spe as expensive as a movie ticket. <laughs> um, we'll see. I, I I don't. I really at this point, we're, someone's like talked about having a 3D display. Um, and others have talked about there being uh, two cameras for taking 3D photos. I don't see that. I just don't see it. 3D. I, I think Jobs still thinks 3D is probably gimmicky. I mean, it is, I mean, yeah. It just feels. I mean, it just says gimmick. So I don't see them so going well through. For what? <laughs> so well for Nintendo. <laughs> well, you know what? The iPhone and the iPod Touch are not competitors to Nintendo, according to Nintendo CEO. Uh, iOS four. It's so it's right now. Yeah. And, and by the way, the jailbreak. If you haven't upgraded, don't upgrade to um, iOS four point three point four. You want to stay at 4.3.3, and if you have Wi-Fi right now, you can go to jailbreakme.com, and and you can go in and jailbreak your iPhone. It's really your iPad. It's really easy. I did it at the Apple Store to an iPad too, um, by going <laughs> onto the uh, Wi-Fi for the the, the um, it's the rotisserie, which is the coffee shop two stores down. I got on the free Wi-Fi because their Wi-Fi blocks jailbreakme.com. Really? Yeah. Apple. Yeah, at any Apple Store, if you go to jailbreakme.com, it takes you to this uh, landing page on apple.com. Uh, but if you go to a free Wi-Fi at one of the local stores that are around most Apple stores, uh, you can go in and then jailbreak one of their iPads. You could. And now they've upgraded them all to 4.3.4. I uh, got my first app that said you will not run on a jailbroken iPad. Yeah, that's the uh, Time Warner. That's right. Yeah. It took about half a day for somebody to write a way around that. Around that. Yeah. <laughs> iBooks did that for a while, too. You couldn't open no. iBooks you bought off of the iTunes. You know, I, I, on my show, I talk about jailbreaking a lot. I, one thing I don't talk about is pirating. I don't believe in jailbreaking for pirating. Um, <coughs> I believe in jailbreaking for adding features and, and, and adding things that aren't there. I don't consider um, tethering, stealing, because I've already paid for that data. I have an unlimited data plan. How I want to use that data is how I want to use it. Um, so the, <laughs> it's still not illegal. It, it, it's it's questionable. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. You, you know, what's what's the definition of unlimited? I, you know, they're not going to take it to court because they don't want to. Yeah. They don't want an answer. They'll just kick you off. And, <laughs> uh, but you know, the main thing is there's a lot of cool jailbreak apps out there. I went over some of them here that add some features. Um, there's a lot of other ones. There still is not an Apple II emulator. Is there a warranty? And I've been reading. What? Is there a warranty? A warranty? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, does jailbreak avoid the warranty? Oh, does jailbreak avoid It depends on who your warranty is with. If your warranty is with Square Trade, uh, jailbreaking does not break the Square Trade warranty. They specifically came out and said, you can go ahead and jailbreak. We will honor uh, the warranty. Uh, Apple does say if you jailbreak, um, it avoids the warranty. But if you bring your iPhone into them and it's jailbroken, they will tell you take it home, unjailbreak it, and bring it back. Yeah. Um, so you know, basically, they won't service it jailbroken, but if you restore it, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't take your jailbroken iOS device into the Apple Store. They won't give you red Deep red Yeah. Somebody had. Somebody mentioned earlier today that the emulation clause was relaxed. Is that true, and to what extent? 
I have heard that it was relaxed, and I heard was it um, it was uh, Commodore sixty four emulator. Yeah. Was, was yeah. The one, and and I don't know if it's in the Apple Store now but officially. It had fixed function. That was the trick. It had fully integrated and fully licensed. They had no one had tested that. Right. Basically, it's a GS yeah, emulator. Come with That's which one is that? It's an active GS. It's an active GS. You use and cannot allow to install arbitrary software. Okay, on test two till the end of the week, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Which simulator is that for? Active, active GS. Active GS? Okay. It's a GS simulator. But no Apple II simulator yet. Yes. That, that, that's, is that, that's the name of it? There is oh, a GS. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it exists. And oh. It, and it it's like it's got the same, deal with, the same deal with the Commodore one. It's all packed in there. But you go Where in there with phone it? disc. It's, on, it's in the App Store. It's in the App Store? Yep. Yeah. Oh. You go in there with phone disc. You can just slide in your own thing and change the, change the XML file. And, the but you heard that. Okay. Well, anyway, I was looking in the jailbroken, jailbroken stores for it, no, so I didn't even look in the regular. I know you wouldn't think it would be in the app store, but yeah. it is. Okay. Well, I apologize, folks, for, for missing that. <laughs> That's um, why you come. So. Yeah. yeah. I come. I, you know, I, I put up my, my Google Plus thing, and I said, I come here to be humbled. Um, so, yeah. I, It'll, it'll be interesting uh, to see what the iPhone does. Just to do for your next robot, use a use a bigger iPhone, extra oh. iPad for the robot in front of the kids, <laughs> scrolling the text. <laughs> okay, it was it was dangerous enough putting the uh, the two iPhones in there because I was just afraid he was going to fall forward. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I could just see both screens breaking. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, not putting my wife's iPad in there. That wasn't gonna, that wouldn't have floated. Um, any, any other questions? Anyone want to come up? You can play the iCade. It's it got all the Atari classic. What was uh, the uh, app that you had for the game? The games. It's Atari. It's the Atari app. Just search for Atari, Atari. and it's it's uh, you, they sell them in multiple little packs. It's it's basically the, the Atari app itself. You download. It's free, and you get um. One free. It was Pong. They changed it. It's not Pong anymore. Is it Missile Command? Okay, Missile Command now. And, and yeah, because Pong. Who wanted Pong? Um, and so you get that free. But for fourteen ninety nine, you get ninety nine apps, and and that includes uh, like twenty from the arcade, and the rest are are from the Atari um, unit. And from the Atari computer or the Atari via twenty six hundred. Okay, twenty six hundred. Yeah. And, and Forty different ways to play Space Invaders. <laughs> yes, uh, but there there is some of the classic ones in there. I mean, it's none of the Activision ones, which were actually the better twenty six hundred games yeah, were the Activision yeah. ones. Um, you're not going to have was it Custer's Revenge? Nah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, some people know that one. Okay. No, I know that one. <laughs> For those that don't know Custer's Revenge, they're going to be going to Wikipedia and looking that up. Um, yeah. It, but it, it's the Atari ones. Um, again, it doesn't have Xevious. It doesn't have um, uh, Vanguard, which I think are two of the better ones. Uh, and, and right now, that work with the iCade, it's just the Atari app. They don't have, I haven't heard of any others that have made it in the App Store yet. Uh, but there are some developers, and they have an SDK that they've been pushing. iCade has been pushing out there. Uh, so hopefully, Miss um, Pac-Man and Galaga in 1941 will be out soon enough. Uh, for the IK, because those are ones, you know, those are really designed for a joystick. Uh, I found it interesting that Apple didn't put Xevious in there, which is designed for a joystick. Um, uh, when they did put in games like Missile Command and Centipede and ones that were designed for a trackball. Centipede, what's funny is I found Centipede not to work as well as Millipede. Millipede worked better, um, and I used to have a Centipede machine in my house when my wife met me. Some of the uh, arcade apps actually, I think, are now supporting a Wiimote. So you can use the Wii controller as your controller. Has the jailbreak community done any, like, the virtual pinball tables, like pin name? Have they done anything like that? I, I'm not aware if they have. Huh? Well, look at it. We'll look at it. But yeah, you don't want to. If you want to jailbreak, do not upgrade to iOS 4.3.4 because that will the the only thing that iOS 4.3.4 did was break jailbreakme.com. I mean, it was that was the only reason it came out, and the only thing it does 
is it adds um, it's patch. Well, if you're from Apple's perspective, it patches a security hole, um, and the security hole being that you can jailbreak it. Um, and because the only thing that anyone ever did with the security hole was jailbreak. Um, and, and once you do jailbreak, you can go download a program called PDF Patcher 2, which, by the way, if you do jailbreak, uh, download PDF Patcher 2, and then that patches it. So that makes it as secure as 4.3.4. I think, um, I mean, I, I love jailbreaking, and I'm happy that it can do it, but it was a security hole. Like, it's kind of frightening how easy it is to jailbreak. It executes arbitrary code on the device from Safari. Yes. That's scary. Or ingenious. Well, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. Shame they had to. I mean, this is the third. This is the third time jailbreakme.com's worked. So you know, uh, there was. A, I'm, I'm sure many of you may have seen the clip with Wozniak in the limo with Kathy Griffin taking her iPhone and going to jailbreakme.com and jailbreaking her phone when she was she was doing the reality show. So any of the Woz fans may remember that. That was kind of cool. Oh, have you gotten what? Wireless, uh, the Wi-Fi sync better work. I know you, you just recommended it on there. Yeah. You actually got it to work. Yeah, Wi-Fi sync works for me. Dumb thing to work, and they don't respond to their, their tech support either. Oh. So, no, I got a stupid problem with this thing. I can't, any any computer it plugs into, this is one iPad. And if I plug the charger in, it works, but I can't do anything else. Like, it's stuck in a world on its own until I go and... Which version of the uh, OS are you on? 4.3.3. And is it jailbroken? Yeah. Well, obviously, if you're using Wi-Fi sync, it has to be. Um, yeah. Uh, so I can't. You might I can't have. Even you get know, my data off of it. Well, here's a here's a problem. Sometimes with Wi-Fi. Here's here's the, the right issue with jailbreaking. The more apps you download that are jailbroken apps, the higher the percentage of probability you're going to have an issue with your device. No, I know, but I I, I think it's hardware. I'm just, I think it's hardware because it doesn't even show up on the USB port. Mm -hmm. It could be. Don't don't assume it's hardware. I mean, it can be a conflict with apps. I would take. I would just uh, restore it back to 4.3.3 raw, unjailbroken, then rejailbreak and see. I mean, it's worth doing that. I think mean, the problem is I can't. I can't, can't restore connect. anything right now, and I don't know that if, if I do that and wipe it and put it in a DFU mode, I don't know that anything's going to happen. I might. Uh, well, you, you can go back to 4.3.3 unless you have your... What? Yeah. Right. Well, you, you can get it. You can get 4.3.3. You, you just download 4.3.3 onto your computer, yeah. which is no, readily available. It goes to that phase in iTunes where it says verifying the secure with Apple. Well, you just don't have, don't have the latest version of iTunes. You can still restore the old one. Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. Old how, old, how, how old a version of iTunes do you have to use? Just one version back. No, I can, no I've even way. used... No way. I've used the current one and restored whatever I yeah. want. As yeah. long as yeah. you just hold the option key down and pick it. Yeah, it just takes the it. option key. Yeah. It should, it, I, I'm, I promise that you won't be able to go back to 434 as you restore it. It'll make you go on 433. I mean, 433. Okay. Okay. If you've upgraded to 434, maybe, but he hasn't gone to 434 yet. No. He's still at 433. It hasn't changed yeah, anything. Been there. I'm not, I'm, I'm, yeah, he hasn't been there. It's, if you haven't been, I actually know people that have gone from four three four back to four three three already. Did they save their their blobs? No, they just they just went and did a complete restore from four three four to four three three. This isn't a phone. Yeah, it doesn't have a baseband problem. Yeah, this yeah, isn't about. I'm like, issue, all right, we can talk about this later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Rob.